What's going on guys? So this video is pretty much a response to all the comments that I've gotten over the years on what is your backup camera setup? Well, I'm gonna go through that and I'm gonna talk about it today. First, I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna talk about everything that is installed just so that you can get a good look on how it is, how it all works and everything. And then later on in the video, I'm gonna go through more in detail how it's wired, how I wired it up. Cause I did a few little creative things so that I can press a button and look at the reverse camera without that turning on my reverse lights. Because normally, if you install a button without like a, a relay or a diode or something, then you're going to back feed the system and turn on your reverse lights. So you need to wire it up the way that I've wired it up. And I'll have a, a diagram popping up that shows how I have it wired. If you wanted to do the same thing, or you could do it with diodes, but I did it with relays because that's what I have. So since I am talking about that, and then I'm talking about the wiring later, I've laid it out in using YouTube's chapter feature, which you can click through on the progress bar to different parts of the video so that you're going to the section of the video that you wanna to go to. Or you can see the description down below to see those chapters laid out and what timestamp that they're at. But anyway, jumping into this, front camera, first things first, or front things first. So the front camera faces the front and it's always on regardless of of, of what I'm doing unless I put it into reverse and I realized that this is useful after I slammed into a, uh, a pole in a parking garage that was like this tall so it was two feet tall pretty much and, but I couldn't see it because this is four feet from here down so I basically turned a corner and did not know because of the blind spots in, in this I couldn't see it on the right and I, yeah, I had no idea the pole was there. It actually pushed my fender back, but it didn't damage the fender. It just pushed it back at the body mount and it made my fender bulge on the inside. So the fender bulges a little bit on that side now just because of where the fender was pushed back. And then it broke the plastic piece here and all of that. So I, after that, I was like, okay, I need something like a front camera so that I don't do that again. And it pretty much looks at the top of the, uh, the winch and it can see the top corners of this and this. I can't see the winch cable unless the winch cable is pulled out because this is completely blocked by the top of this. I'll talk about the wiring for this in a little bit later, how I ran the wire. Coming back to the back camera. So I have it sitting here and it's zip tied. I need to cut this off. This has been like this for a long time, but both this camera and the front camera, they've been on the FJ Cruiser for four years. They're cheap Amazon cameras. They still work really well. They're pretty great. So this camera, and that camera are both same brand. I'm gonna talk about how it's installed in a second. But coming into the interior, front camera is always on and it's always doing the front, unless I press my little reverse switch, reverse camera button that's down here, and then that pretty much doesn't turn on the reverse light because of the way that I have it wired with a relay. I'm gonna talk about that in a second. Or I can put it in reverse. Reverse lights come on like they're supposed to and yeah, um, so it goes back to the front camera whenever it's done. So I'm gonna go back to the front camera and talk about wiring. The front camera is powered completely by the monitor that's up there. So the wire goes here. Normally I would use a regular video cable that comes with the cameras, but the problem that I was having uh, in the first time that I ran the wires was the video cable that comes with the camera it was running too close to this relay box and the electromagnetic interference that is from the little electromagnets that are inside the relays was pretty much killing the camera signal. So whenever I would turn my fog lights on, the camera would fade to white and then the camera would shut off because there was too much electromagnetic interference. The monitor probably couldn't tell that it was an actual camera signal because of all the interference. So I switched it to this. This is Rockford Fosgate audio wire and I pretty much separated the left channel and right channel. I just pulled the wires apart because it's, it's fairly easy to do that. This allows me to run it by something that would cause electromagnetic interference, but it doesn't interfere with the wire. So it's, this, is, this is twisted pair and it's a 20 foot cable. So it's as long as the video cable that comes with this. The grounding point that I used, I pretty much just put it on this, uh, this screw that holds in some of the headlight. It's like one of the headlight screws. So I just screwed it under there that's been like this has been like this for years and even though i've had to disconnect this and like when i put the front bumper on and all the other stuff that i've done it's it's still uh, it's still held up it's still it's a good ground point so if you run this positive wire to your battery then your camera is going to stay on all the time you need a way for this camera to be switched off and the monitor that i have is capable of supplying power to the camera so yeah 
So that's that. You can tell this has been there a long time. This is like four years of um, mud and engine heat and everything else, and this still works. The only issue that I had, which is why I just replaced this cable yesterday, the only issue that I had was that relay box messing with the video signal. But that's fixed now. Going to the rear camera, now keep in mind this is installed a little bit differently. You can install the rear camera the same way that you would a front camera. If you buy the same stuff, I have a link to all of these, uh, the, the cameras that I bought, hopefully they're still sold on Amazon because they work and they've been working for like four years. So if you want to buy any of this stuff, the links to all of these things will be in the description below. But you can, if you're, you just want to be simple, you can install the rear camera the same way that I installed my front camera. You would just need a positive trigger from somewhere to trigger the monitor to switch over to the reverse camera, which I used the same wire location to tap into that the previous owner used. They just didn't do a very good job tapping into the wire. They tapped into the reverse light power with a vampire tap, which the vampire taps, if you don't know what they are, don't look into what they are. Just don't use them for anything at all. It allows oxygen to get into the wire and it ends up corroding the wire. You don't want that. Initially it works and it works great, but it ends up causing wiring problems later on. I had to fix that. I have a little fuse box that I've installed here. So just in case there's any issues that this ends up rubbing on metal because I'm running a wire in a place where Toyota never ran wire. Um, so if this rubs anywhere on any of the metal and ends up causing a short, then it just trips this fuse and my bulb stays fine. And the way the wires are run on this, so this is the, this is the camera wire, and, which has a positive wire built into it. And this is the signal wire. There's two wires inside of this, and they actually feed up. If you take off the plastics that are inside the door threshold, it's pretty much fed under here, under here, across here, all the way down, and then it goes up and across and over to, you know, this is a wire mess. This is temporary. That's just a coolant pressure, coolant temperature gauge that I have on some stuff that I installed in the engine in the previous video. So that's just temporary while I'm monitoring things. Now my signal wire that I, that red wire that's coming off of my reverse light bulb, instead of running it straight to the trigger wire that goes into this monitor, which is the blue wire, if you get this same exact monitor that I have down in the description. And I'm gonna talk about this bracket in a second. That red trigger wire should connect straight to this monitor to tell the monitor to switch over to the reverse camera. But in my situation, I actually have that going to pin 86 and pin 87 on a relay that I have back here. The relay that I've used is a Bosch style five pin relay. Now normally how you would wire the relay is you would set it up to where you have power going into one pin and then if the relay is off then one of, one of the pins gets a power signal and if the relay is on then one of the other pins gets a power signal. That's normally how you would set it up. Now I've actually wired it up in reverse to where you would have two different power sources going in, one going in through pin 87A on the five pin relay and then the other one going into pin 87 on the five pin relay. So that way the relay decides, kind of like railroad tracks switching, the relay decides which pin is sending power through pin 30. I've wired relays like this before in multiple different situations. I actually have a video in a little bit more detail that shows how that works, how you can, I call it uh, dual power source switching. And it's more of like an advanced relay tutorial, but it's, a, it's an animation that shows how to set up a relay doing that. I think that was for using a cooling fan uh, on an engine and have, having two different power sources triggering the cooling fans to come on. It's the same end result if you were to do it in say something like this, where you have two different power sources, one of them being a switch button and the other one being reverse lights, and you don't want your, your switch button to backfeed your reverse lights and turn on your reverse lights whenever you press the button to view your reverse camera, which is what I didn't want to do. And that gives me the option of using my reverse lights to turn on the camera or it gives me the option of pressing the button to turn on the reverse camera. So if my relay breaks, I basically still have pin 87A connecting to pin 30 inside the relay, even if the relay isn't coming on because of whatever other reason. So I can still put it in reverse and my backup camera still works because it is always going to work even if the relay is not getting power. So anyway, uh, going up to this, this is what I had to make to get the monitor to fit in the FJ Cruiser. And what I like about this monitor is it's got this groove on the back. And I like this specifically because I can make something like this. This is just this is just a basic one and a half inch width aluminum flat bar 
that is an eighth inch thick. So I just ground off about a half inch off of each side so that this little thing slides in the groove. So there's this little square nut that's supposed to slide in this groove here where I kind of made my own. And then you can mount it to whatever surface you want with this uh, little bracket thing that came with it. Or this has mount holes on the back of it and the monitor snaps in here very easily. You could put it inside of a headrest if you wanted to. The holes that I drilled are there and I believe they're three sixteenths or a quarter inch diameter. But they basically match up with this. So if you take this mirror out, then the two screws where they go into the roof and the headliner up here, those are the two screw holes that hold this part of the bracket in. And it's it's sturdy enough and it's actually far enough. It has to be this far out. Well, not, since I'm using a seven inch monitor, it has to be this far out so that I can still swing my visors if I want to move them over on the driver's side door and block the sun or over on the passenger side door. And then the wires for this I have run there and then I have them running up above the headliner. So how, you can actually get, you can actually put wires up in the headliner fairly easily. This, you just turn this sideways and that pops out really easily. And then, oh, I didn't, I didn't put it in all the way. I've got to snap that. You have to push it in kind of hard because it's got to push this headliner back up before you turn it and then you snap it back in. And then these screws here and here, I was able to take those out and you can drop the headliner just enough to where you can feed wire up there. This comes out so you can pop this out with a flathead screwdriver there and there, and then take these two 10 millimeter bolts out there and there. Uh, and then this pops off so you can run the wire. I actually ran my wire here and down here. And then if you're feeding wire down from here, you can only get your fingers down uh, at probably like finger length really going down here in this little gap after you take this plastic piece off. But you can stick your hand up fairly far to just barely touch your fingers when you're going down under here. And then you see I have the rest of this wire tucked there. That's going to be more like whenever I put this cover back on, that wire will be covered up. Oh, dog hair. It's everywhere. I thought I vacuumed all that up yesterday. <laughs> but no, you never get rid of all the dog hair. So this cover comes off really easily. There's a little stud right there, as you can see. And that stud takes a plastic nut that you could screw on with your fingers and screw off with your fingers. Uh, but in order to take this off, you have to take this plastic threshold off and this just snaps off. You can you can stick your fingers underneath or something that's like a plastic pry tool, something that's not going to scratch anything and pull up and it snaps the uh, the threshold out from these little these little holders. Putting it back in is the same, just obviously line it up here here and here. But it pops out and you have to take this out because it covers this little little uh, side kick panel, corner kick panel, I don't know what it's called. And then I have the wire run there and underneath there. And then coming in from the engine bay, I actually didn't show that. So I have this wire and this, this power wire that's here that's going to the, uh, to the camera. I have them running up through, there's basically, there's a hole in the firewall that's got like a little rubber cover that goes around. Um, I think it's your rear windshield washer fluid hose. That goes through there and that's, you can actually reach that just going up a few inches from, from down here. So you can feel where that is and that comes in from the engine bay. I'll show where it is in the engine bay. And then down here is where I have those two wires running. So I just, I cut open this little knob here. It's a, it's a separate way that you can run wires. It's just a little protrusion thing that sticks out maybe like a little over a quarter of an inch. So I just cut that off and I fed my two wires in through that. And they're just wide enough to where you can squeeze that, the head of this RCA jack through there. It's, it's really difficult to to fit it through there, but it is doable. Just have some patience working through, uh, working through that. But that's it. That's my camera setup, the entire camera setup. I know in the past I have used uh, cheap Chinese Android radios and that works well too. And you have the, the video that's there. That works. That died though. And I used to have a smaller monitor than the seven inch one that I have set up right now. Ended up buying this monitor and I put it in yesterday. It had good Amazon reviews, that's why I used that one. All the stuff that I bought, it had good Amazon reviews, which is why I used that stuff. So hopefully this video has helped you and your 
camera selection process, installation process, or just giving you ideas. Maybe you want to set yours up how I have mine set up with the reverse button so that you can press the button and then it's a, it's a, I don't know, it's a little excessive, but it allows me to see behind me if I'm on a hill and I want to take off. Mine's a manual transmission. Sometimes here in Hawaii, people park too close to me and they just, I don't know, I don't want to roll back and hit them. So I could see how far away from them I, I am by pressing the, pressing the button. But that's why I installed the button pretty much. So thanks a lot for watching. If you have any questions or comments or whatever, leave them down below. If you have any ideas for future videos or if you have other things that you want to see on this, check the description and check my other videos. But if it's something I haven't made a video on, then leave it in the comments below and let me know if you want to see a video on it and I'll talk about it. Thanks a lot for watching though and God bless you guys.